Today, let's talk about the importance of routines and schedules for kids. and welcome back to Faith Foster Fire Life. I'm Val. If this is your first time stopping by our channel, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back, guys. On this channel, we talk about everything in our family that has to do with our faith, our fire life, and foster care. We also are a homeschooling family, so you'll find lots of videos about homeschool on our channel as well. Today, I really wanted to take a few minutes and talk about the importance of routines and schedules for kids. Now, if you've been around our channel for a while, you know our backstory that we have been a foster family for 11 years. And in that time, we fostered 24 children and we adopted uh, two from foster care. And we also have two biological sons who are now adults. So we have had lots of years of having to implement routines and schedules for our kids. And we have just seen such a huge benefit and blessing to being diligent about that, that I wanted to share it with you today. I remember when we first were in training to be foster parents, we did a training on routines and schedules. And I thought that being a professional organizer in my past life, that I already had established pretty good routines and schedules for myself and even for our little kids. Our older sons were um, about three and six when we started fostering. And so I thought we had a pretty good idea of what it meant to have schedules and routines. But I learned so much in that first training that really helped me as a parent to my own biological kids, never mind the foster kids that would eventually come through our home. And I think the reason for that is because God created us in a way that thrives in routine and some structure. The Bible itself is laid out in a very um, structural way. God created the heavens and the earth, and then the oceans and the land, and everything was very sequential. If you read Genesis, you'll see that pattern from the very beginning. And he also gave us time, right? The sun rises, the sun sets. We have a sense of day and night and that same pattern happening every single day. And as a adults, we can see that that's a real benefit to us. We know how to plan our days and nights based on just the natural rhythm of life. And so we can see that this is a very natural thing for humans to uh, crave and to need. And it gives us a very good sense of security. Can you imagine if every day we woke up and we weren't sure if the sun was going to rise or not, or what time it was going to rise? Obviously, we have um, a small shift in what time the sun rises based on our clock that we currently use. But we have that sense of routine, that's that rhythm of life that every day we can expect the sun is going to rise, the sun is going to set, we're going to have day, we're going to have night. And we all structure our entire lives around a time schedule, right? We are very accustomed to the 24 hours in a day, the 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. And so the same is true for kids. They come into this world and they have no sense of time. They have no sense of day or night. If any of you have had newborns, you know that very well. Often newborns will get their days and nights mixed up with sleep. And um, that turns a whole family upside down, doesn't it? So you can see this is a natural way for human beings to live life is with routines and schedules. So it's very important that with the children in our life, whether they're biological or especially with foster children, we as adults create those kinds of routines and schedules for them. I'm not sure how many of you um, know foster families or uh, children who have been adopted from foster care, but one of the main things that all foster children go through is some kind of trauma. Now, even if um, a child was removed from their home and they were eventually re reunified and um, there was no major neglect or abuse, the simple act of being removed from that home causes a trauma in that child's life. And the same is true um, even for the average child. I don't know um, too many people out there as adults 
who can look back and say they've experienced zero trauma in their lives. So while this video is um, heavily geared towards foster families and potential foster families, um, it's also for any parent out there because we um, in life just experience trauma. I mean, statistically, 50% of all marriages end in divorce. Divorce for a child is traumatic, no matter how well the parents handle it. There are lots of different scenarios in life that cause trauma for children. And some are small, some are big. I mean, even this last year of the pan pandemic has been traumatic for a lot of children. Their whole world got turned upside down. So that's why I really wanted to touch on this topic today and encourage you that if you are typically the kind of um, person who goes by the seat of their pants or um, isn't really good at um, scheduling, you're kind of doing a disservice for any of the kids in your house because those routines and schedules cause um, a sense of security and safety. I mean, think about the times you're in a car with a kid and you could be just driving down the road for a few minutes and there's, what's the question? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> there's just something in us that wants to know what's going to happen. We need to know what to expect in life. Um, and once we get the answer to that question, our anxieties really go down and we feel safe. We know something's going to happen. And so creating routines and schedules for our kids, just bless them and um, heal the traumas in their life in such an impactful way. And it doesn't have to be difficult. So let's talk about some of the basic ways we can create routines and schedules for our kids that really take very so, little effort. The number one thing is we all have some kind of uh, flow to our lives, right? So whether you are a homeschooling family or your kids go to a traditional school, your life has some kind of a flow to it. So I'm gonna speak specifically to um, the schedule that maybe a foster family would have. By law, uh, foster families cannot homeschool their foster children. So your foster kids are going to be going to public school, most likely public school, maybe a charter school. Um, in some rare instances, maybe a private school. But um, your you know, year, your school year, is going to be pretty much following that school schedule. So their school day is already laid out. You don't have to worry about that part. Um, the school does that part for you. But what you need to focus on is that time before and after school, keeping um, a schedule or a routine for your kids. And it may seem um, simple, right? Like you get up, you get dressed, you brush your teeth, you have breakfast, um, pack your lunch, whatever, and then get on the bus and go to school. Like in an adult's mind, it's very simple. It's very simply laid out. But you have to remember, the children coming into your home may not have had that simple structure in their life at all. These kids usually um, have missed many, many days of school. They wake up and they don't know, is mom taking me to school today? Is she not? Um, are we staying home all day? Are we uh, going to before school care today? Are we not? So they may have come from a situation where a normal routine that you might take for granted is completely foreign to them. So the sooner that you establish, literally from day one, the day they enter your home, um, a routine with them, the faster they will feel more secure, safe, loved, um, and their anxieties will go down about being in, in your so, new home. There's a couple of really practical ways you can do that. If you have a child who is at um, who reads, who's at a reading level, you can just go ahead and print a daily routine, a morning routine, and I will link below some of the really simple ones that you can find on Amazon, on Etsy, and they're really affordable too, or just PDFs that you can print out yourself. So you can just have ones that lay out their tasks for the morning. Um, and it's really a good idea to be able to find a way to involve the kids in the routine. So that might mean making it sort of like a checklist style, like wake up, easy one, check off <laughs> that they woke up. Um, maybe the first thing you would typically want them to do is get dressed. So you have get dressed on there, check it off. Um, and then they have some um, ownership 
in the process, right? They're not just being told what to do. It's part of, um, they get to decide and be part of that process. And then if you have kids who are not a reading age, then just doing the same type of thing, but doing it with visuals. So again, there are lots and lots of resources out there that will show you little pictures of getting dressed, brushing your teeth, um, having breakfast, making your bed, all the different things you may wanna incorporate into a morning routine. And again, the little ones can either check it off or um, there are a few that I love that are actually Velcro based and they will take their little activity and they'll peel it off with the Velcro and stick it on to their list when it's completed. And, you know, little kids love to do little hands on things like that. So having a morning routine like that and then they're off to school and then creating the same thing for an afternoon routine is very, very important. So when they come home, they're not wondering, um, am I having a snack? Do I do my homework first? Am I um, going to a friend's house? Am, are they involved in sports or an after-school club or activity? Um, they will eventually feel that rhythm, feel that flow of your family. In addition to a daily routine like that with the visuals, um, it's a really good idea to also have a family calendar. Now over the years, we've done this really in a simple way. We buy the large um, monthly calendars that um, can go in your refrigerator. So it's an essential place in your home where everybody can see what's going on for that month. And again, uh, little kids, they're not gonna be able to read that or um, get too far ahead of them, but the older kids, they do want to know what's coming next. They're gonna wanna know when the visits are with their birth parents, when visits are with caseworkers, any other special things that might be happening that month. They wanna see ahead of time what to prepare for. So having a family calendar that's visible and accessible to the whole family, including your foster kids, is really paramount to um, healing those traumas and making them feel like they're a little bit more in control of what's happening happening in their life. I mean, you know, they've come from a situation where very little was in their control and um, small things that you might take for granted are going to trigger some anxious behaviors in them. Things like not knowing what tomorrow holds can just trigger bad behaviors and doing a simple thing like following a routine and showing them what's going to happen for the week or the month will um, just start to get rid of some of those behaviors that may seem like huge mountains to climb with your children, but um, just giving them that sense of uh, security and, and safety will alleviate those. Um, so one thing I will, <laughs> uh, we learned by um, error is we used to use a dry erase marker type of um, calendar. And we did have a couple of children that were in our home that when they were triggered with some kind of bad behavior and they kind of wanted to take it out on us, they would go and erase the whole uh, calendar for the month. And, you know, it was just kind of a way of telling that, telling us um, they didn't want to participate and they were angry with us for whatever reason. So um, I would suggest you maybe getting a paper calendar that you can write the, um, the dates and the activities and what you have going on in pen <laughs> so they can't do that. Along with having those kinds of um, morning and afternoon routines and the, day, the monthly and weekly schedules, uh, being consistent about things like breakfast time, snack time, and dinner time are also super important. A lot of the kids that come into foster care have food insecurities either by um, just the situation they're in. Maybe their families literally couldn't afford food and so they didn't really know when their next meal would come or they were neglected and their parents did not feed them even if they had food in the house. And so sometimes kids will hoard food. That's a very common thing for foster children to do. So having a very consistent meal time in your home is paramount in making them feel secure that they're going to eat. They will literally see it on the calendar or on the routine schedule that dinner time is coming they don't need to worry they will be fed and um, same goes for traditions right that's one thing i wanted to talk about was 
If you grew up in a family that had traditions, um, maybe it was getting your Christmas tree or going to the pumpkin patch or going to visit a certain family member at a certain time of the year, those things really stay with you. And the reason they stay with you is because they were predictable. They were things you did over and over again. So even if you're only um, gonna have a foster child for a few months, you can still sort of create traditions with them in, um, in a weekly kind of way. So mealtimes are a great opportunity to have traditions. So if you're a family of faith, praying before your meals creates a sense of tradition. It's something that they can look forward to and expect and say, oh, this is something I know this new family does that I can participate in and I can feel like part of the family. Um, we've had times when we had certain traditions, weekly traditions, like pizza night, in our home and for if for some reason that didn't happen our foster kids would be like it's friday why aren't we having pizza so they look forward to those things it makes them feel like you know i have something good to look forward to and along with um having these schedules and routines one thing that is also super important is that life happens and as a foster parent and even a, a parent to biological kids how we react to changes in that schedule or routine is really, really important. So if you're the type of person that gets flustered easily when things you know, don't happen or schedules change, then you have to really work hard on that to not let your foster kids see that because they're gonna see you know, if a visit gets canceled or um, a play date gets canceled or somebody got sick or whatever it is and you, kind of show your frustration in that, um, that's gonna trickle down to them and they will start to do the same thing. So you may have made a lot of progress in their behaviors with really good routines and really good schedules and traditions. And then um, they may get so caught up in that that if it doesn't happen and they see you reacting badly to it, they then react badly to it. So it's kind of a balance of creating that um, expectations and um, that level of comfort of knowing what's coming next but also being able to demonstrate how to go with the flow and be okay with changes when they do need to happen. I hope this video gave you some encouragement and some tools to use in your home that will help give your kids a sense of peace and calm and comfort and it will change the dynamic of your entire home if you put some of these things in place. So I hope that this was a blessing to you and go and love God and love others.